Chapter 31 Yuri Magical Genius Don 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 Han Sha Oh stood outside Fanny's door and knocked with an outreached hand. Brian is it you? Come in. Fanny's faintly lethargic voice sounded from inside the room. When Han Sha Oh pushed the door open, he was greeted with a sight of Fanny's wet purple hair plastered to the white nape of her neck. A few translucent traces of water still clung to her charming face. Fanny had obviously just showered as she was wrapped in a soft white robe. A small patch of milky white creamy skin was revealed on her chest as she toweled away the water in her hair with her jade hands. It was a simple room with a cloud of mist billowing out from the open doors of the bathroom which was in the back. Fanny was sitting next to a round table a pair of troubled eyes roving over Han Sha Oh's body. Master Fanny what did you want me for? Han Sha Oh looked around the room and his heart seized upon seeing how tempting Fanny's beauty was, but he kept a dumb honest and even slightly fearful expression on his face. What for? H.M.P.H. You were certainly bold on the back of that horse today. I've always thought you were cowardly and timid, but you commit the most outrageous acts when your lewd desires rear their head. Fanny took her measure of Han Sha Oh and snorted lightly with a frown. Here it comes. Han Sha Oh thought as his expression grew even more innocent. He scratched his head and held his breath until his face grew red then took a deep breath and hung his head. I'm sorry Master Fanny you're so beautiful and pretty and you were suddenly so close to me. I don't know what came over me but I couldn't control my actions. I was wrong Master Fanny please punish me, pa. Fanny suddenly slapped the table in anger and Han Sha Oh backed up in shock watching Fanny fearfully. Damn it you violated me. Do you understand? Fanny glared fiercely at Han Sha Oh as she shouted hoarsely. Han Sha Oh nodded his head honestly and said with an open face I was wrong Master Fanny I'll bear responsibility. Ha. You take responsibility? Are you able to? Fanny laughed amid her rage upon hearing Han Han Sha Oh's words. Although she giggled as she stared at Han Sha Oh there wasn't a single trace of a smile on her face. A. Hey, then I'll do whatever you say. It's all up to you. Han Sha Oh was certain that Fanny wouldn't do too much to him, so he sighed with a face of resignation and responded genuinely. With that said Fanny didn't really know what to do with Han Sha Oh. From her perspective it was highly likely that Han Sha Oh hadn't committed that act on purpose plus she had been the one who told him to get on the horse. Although that had happened it wasn't as if Han Sha Oh had committed a heinous crime at the end of the day. He was just a mere errand slave it felt a bit awkward trying to decide how to punish him. Seeing that Fanny's brows were slightly knitted and that she seemed to be having difficulty in figuring out what to do with him a thought struck Han Sha Oh and he said Master Fanny didn't you say that I'm your experimental subject? I have felt something weird with my body lately and something strange is happening to my mind. When I heard Lisa chant the incantation for the bone arrow spell a few days ago I tried saying it as well and actually activated it. Fanny had been deep in furrowed thought but started upon hearing these words. She immediately looked at Han Sha Oh in astonishment saying excitedly, Really? Did you really mean that? Can you try out the bone narrow magic for me? Han Sha Oh knew that Fanny was addicted to necromancy magic and was extremely curious about his body's condition. He was also well aware that he wouldn't be just an errand slave for the academy forever so this was a perfect opportunity to slowly change his image in Fanny's eyes. Indeed, as soon as Fanny had heard his body's peculiar condition, she immediately forgot about punishing him and temporarily focused all her concentration on this matter. Of course, I can. Han Sha Oh smiled faintly and raised his hands chanting lowly oh endless darkness turns into destructive bone arrows and destroy according to my will. Bone arrows. A cuttingly sharp bone arrow appeared out of thin air in front of Han Sha Oh as soon as he completed his incantation. The bone arrow flew towards the wooden wall at his gesture but started to wobble halfway through and then finally exploded with a sharp crack. No no. The incantation was correct but your hand seals during casting were incorrect. The right hand should slowly lift up and the left hand shouldn't be on the same level as the right hand. Fanny first started to teach in her accustomed manner then abruptly reacted with a sharp intake of breath. She looked at Han Sha Oh with a face full of shock and her lithe body trembled eagerly. She cried out breathlessly oh my gosh. You can really cast necromancy magic. Yes yes. I don't know what happened either. Oh. Right Master Fanny can you explain to me in detail the proper hand seals to cast the magic? Han Sha Oh sniggered inwardly and spoke to Fanny with a look of confusion. Of course, 
I can. Fanny was truly excited and threw the towel in her hand to the side. Her limber legs walked rapidly to Hansha O's side as she started explaining in detail. This this like this, raise your hand higher concentrate your mental strength and don't relax even a bit. Right that's the correct hand seal. I'm um, slow your left hand down a bit and show me again. Oh. Endless darkness turn into destructive bone arrows and destroy according to my will bone arrows. When the bone arrow appeared this time, its direction was correct, but it abruptly exploded into pieces again just before it reached the wooden wall. Brian mental strength. Keep an eye on your mental strength and don't relax for even a second. You can only relax after the bone arrow has successfully struck its target otherwise the bone arrow will explode halfway. Try again. Oh. Endless darkness turn into destructive bone arrows and destroy according to my will bone arrows. Upon completion of the incantation the bone arrow flew as fast as lightning without changing its position towards the wooden wall. It pierced the wooden wall with a sharp PFFT and then vanished without a trace. Oh gosh, Brian you're a genius. You're absolutely a magical genius. I've only given you tips twice and you can successfully cast the bone arrow magic. Students typically need one to three months before they can master this magic. You're so incredible. Fanny was utterly stunned by Han Shao and capered around exclaiming loudly. She looked very excited. Damn it who's randomly casting magic? It almost hit me. A eh, Brian Master Fanny? Brian, what are you doing in Master Fanny's room? Lisa's startled cry suddenly came from next door as one of her eyes peered in from the hole in the wall. Nothing much I grabbed Brian for a bit of bone arrow practice. Lisa go to sleep soon we won't be disturbing you anymore. Fanny walked hurriedly to the hole in the wall and replied charmingly. She picked up the towel that she had thrown to the ground earlier and filled in the hole before Lisa had a chance to respond. She turned and looked askance at Han Sha O walking quickly towards him. Stand still and don't move let me see what's going on with your body. Alright. Han Sha O smiled responded faintly. I only spent 10 days to fully master the bone narrow magic. According to Fanny's words maybe I do have some potential for practicing magic. What's that weird smell? Fanny had walked over and was about to reach out to inspect Han Sha O's body when her refined nose wrinkled, and she asked in confusion. Han Sha O stopped in his tracks then abruptly understood. He looked down awkwardly saying wryly, My room doesn't have a bathroom, so I didn't shower. That's why there's still a smell left. Fanny's beautiful face flushed red after these words and she glared violently at Han Sha O cursing lowly despicable. She then pointed to the bathroom with its doors ajar frowning as she hurried him the water is still warm wash that disgusting crap off yourself. It truly was despicable. Han Sha O could still feel a strand of sticky liquid leaking out from a slit in his lower body. Fanny's words echoed his current inclinations. It was indeed, quite uncomfortable for his lower body to remain in a sticky state so he walked merrily to the bathroom that Fanny had just occupied. A simple crude round tub was inside the bathroom. The water inside still gave off steam and several pieces of Fanny's sexy lingerie was laid out on the nearby rack. It only took one glance of the small silk pieces that were as ephemeral as cicada wings for a ball of flame to violently rise from Han Sha O's lower body. Just as Han Sha O was salivating fixedly over the lingerie that Fanny had changed out of she abruptly rushed into the bathroom and hurriedly put away all the items of clothing in great embarrassment. When she turned and saw that Han Sha O's eyes were just about ready to spit fire she involuntarily made a light spitting sound and spat out detestable. She finally left with panicked footsteps after violently pinching Han Sha O's backside. Han Sha O peeled off his clothes and lay within the round pool breathing in the mesmerizing scent that Fanny had left behind in the bathroom with his mouth. Luxuriating in the water that Fanny had previously used Han Sha O felt that the perfection of moment was indescribable with words. He basically didn't want to leave. Han Sha O took a long time to wash up and carelessly scrubbed his underwear only after Fanny had checked in a few times finally walking out of the bathroom clutching his underwear. It's getting late I won't inspect your body today. Hurry and leave. Fanny acted like nothing had happened after Han Sha O had walked out and spoke dispassionately to him.
him. Han Shao nodded with an honest smile and happily walked towards the door. Fanny called out lightly just as Han Shao was about to leave Brian. Peering back in confusion Han Shao scratched his head and asked dumbly yes? Nothing just that you don't seem like someone who's crazy. Fanny sized up Han Shao and said oddly. I don't know what happens when my head hurts but when I'm not being affected by anything, everything is normal. Han Shao's heart skipped a beat. He left in guilty haste after his response. Chapter 32, Small Accomplishments in Magic Chapter 32, Small Accomplishments in Magic Han Shao didn't immediately rest upon returning to the hotel storage room but rather practiced magic as usual. The magical yuan within his body circulated according to the principles of demonic magic. Under Han Shao's careful guidance it flowed through every inch of his meridian's skin muscles and bones. Whether it was his physical strength or his five senses Han Shao could feel that both had greatly improved. Han Shao resolutely kept attacking the final battle neck according to the instructions in the mystical glacial spell fire. He circulated his magical yu onto the centers of his two hands and repeated tried to clear the meridians in his five fingers and bones. Pain continuously emitted from his bones and meridians as his two hands trembled with convulsions. Faint red and purple lights emitted from the backs of his hands like two feeble lanterns. The pain continued to increase while Han Shao grit his teeth and stubbornly hung on. He knew that this was the critical point in training the glacial mystical spell fire. It was up to his will to see if he could clear all the meridians in his hands and achieve successful results with the glacial mystical spell fire. The process of the magical yu on attacking the bones in his five fingers seemed to continue interminably. Han Shao sat Indian style with sweat dripping out of every pore as his veins bulged and pounded in his forehead. His originally peaceful facial expression became a bit sinister and ghastly giving off a feeling of extreme evil. After who knew how long just as Han Shao felt that he would faint from the pain he could no longer bear the bone searing agony in his hands and involuntarily flapped his hands with a low roar. Pay Papa Dot Tin crisp sounds rang out from his fingers as Han Shao immediately felt a bit drained but the magical you on flowed smoothly into his fingers with no obstacles. Ten purple red embers like the flame on a candle wick instantaneously arose from his fingertips. The ten purple red blossoms of fire sparkled with breathtaking colors in the dark of the storage room. They were like hypnotizing flowers that had suddenly bloomed giving others a secretive and unpredictable feeling. The palms of his two hands were also dyed with purple red color along with his fingers. The bones within his hands could clearly be seen and even his skin shone with the translucent gleam looking exceedingly bizarre. Absolutely elated Han Shao roared in a low voice. He then quickly looked around and slowly withdrew the magical yu on from his hands back into his stomach. Without the continued infusion of magical yu on Han Shao's hands slowly went back to normal and the ten flowering flames disappeared as well. Success. This was the evidence of successfully practicing the glacial mystical spell fire. Although its full power could not be demonstrated due to his insufficient magic Magical Yu on Han Shao was no longer a defenseless ordinary person thanks to his current achievements. The red flame of the glacial mystical spell fire burned all in its path whereas the purple flame was bone chillingly cold. Anyone struck with this spell fire would either be burned from the inside out or experience their internal organs being frozen into blocks of ice. The likelihood of survival was exceedingly low. When the caster had sufficient magical Yu on even greater spell fire could be concentrated into the palms and thus unleash even more frightening power. Han Shao was engulfed by a huge wave of exhaustion after succeeding with mystical glacial spell fire and he fell into a deep sleep. The next day dawn, under Fanny's leadership the band of twelve had gathered at the entrance to the town of Jol. They gathered some food and water from the town and piled all these items onto Han Shao. What were you doing in Master Fanny's room last night? Lisa asked Han Shao in a low voice as she hung a leather water skin on him. It seemed like Fanny Fanny hadn't explained last night's events to anyone. Han Shao cast a glance at Fanny off in the distance and realized that she was reminding some students of things to be careful of. He also responded in a low voice nothing much. Master Fanny wanted to test some necromancy magic and used me as a subject. HMPH. Don't lie to me even if Master Fanny wanted to test some magic on you she would test bone arrow. This kind of magic only needs to be practiced by apprentices would she need to test 
possessed this kind of magic as an adept mage? Lisa huffed and looked warily at Han Sha Oh. Master Fanny was testing bone arrow magic isn't each magic spell divided into five levels. She just wanted to see what level of bone arrow magic she could cast with her current strength. You can ask Master Fanny if you don't believe me. Ever since Han Sha Oh had lied to Lisa her attitude had indeed changed drastically towards him. But women were just so. Even if she didn't like him she would still treat you as her personal property when she knew that you liked her. If you developed an ambiguous relationship with anyone she would be the first to feel uncomfortable. Lisa was the same way. Although she didn't think much of him but once she understood Han Sha Oh's thought she naturally thought that Han Sha Oh would like only her unto his death and shouldn't have any goings on with Fanny. Han Sha Oh had heard of this from others before and now it seemed that there was some sense to it. Forget it you wouldn't dare lie to me anyways. Lisa looked at Fanny spoke to Han Sha Oh in a carefree manner and then turned to leave. Brian let's go. The trees and shrubs grow vigorously in the dark forest and the paths are winding and uneven. We can no longer ride horses and can only proceed on foot. You have too many resources on you and cannot be pulled down. There are many vicious magical creatures within the dark forest. It would be tragic if you were pulled down and killed by them. Fanny looked at Han Sha Oh from afar and called out. Fanny's attitude towards Han Sha Oh had subconsciously changed after yesterday's events. She seemed to place greater importance on him now but the gentle attitude she had towards him had ceased to exist replaced with a brusque frustration. Coming coming. Han Sha Oh had taken huge advantage of Fanny yesterday and she'd also witnessed his ugliness in her bathroom last night. It was national that she no longer looked kindly upon him. It was actually a kind of improvement now that Fanny was slowly changing her attitude towards him. Chal was abnormally busy in the day as many stores had already set up shop bright and early. A few sleepy-eyed merchants and adventurers walked out of nearby alleys with their clothes in disarray. These people were also preparing to get to work after a night of depravity. Merchants and adventurers formed groups and set off for the dark forest with their belongings in tow. They either sought to capture magical creatures or trade with the minorities within the forest. Under Fanny's constant urging Han Sha O's group of twelve also put their affairs in order and followed Fanny and Jean's footsteps into the dark forest. The dark forest was vast and endless with various savage and violent magical creatures within it as well as a few uncommon races. Elves, goblins and savages numbered amongst them and were the main races within the forest but even these races normally lived on the outskirts of the forest. The real inner world of the true dark forest was full of mysteries and danger. The largest and most frightening magical creatures lived within this inner world and that was the most tempting and mysterious part of the dark forest. Although legends spoke of great treasures and precious items within the core few dared venture within. Those who dared to enter and still made it out alive were the cream of the crop. Follow me we'll head south. Fanny called out loudly as soon as they entered the dark forest and changed the group's heading making straight for the southern part of the forest. The roads were indeed rugged within the dark forest. All sorts of durable rocks and towering trees with branches tens of meters long could seen everywhere. There were many merchants and adventurers also heading south in the beginning but they all veered off on their own paths as time went on. The others all disappeared in the blink of an eye and no one knew where they went. Suddenly several rapid footfalls fell into Han Sha O's hearing. He paused concentrated his hearing and then immediately said a sound is approaching and it doesn't seem like the steps of humans. Brian you're just an errand slave. What danger can you hear? So ridiculous. Bach was the first to laugh loudly and mock Han Sha Oh. Ever since Han Sha Oh had started training his magical Yu on his five senses had become a lot more perceptive than before. Besides he was confident with his hearing to begin with. It was impossible for humans to emit the fast approaching light taps and there seemed to be more than one. Han Sha Oh had only spoken up because he understood from Fanny and everyone else the dangers of the dark forest but seeing that no one paid any attention to him after his words Han Sha Oh refrained from speaking up further. The group continued to slowly walk south but Fanny first frowned and then exclaimed in surprise after two minutes. She said in her sweet voice there are indeed magical creatures approaching. Everyone put down your things and prepare to fight. Since we're still in the outskirts of the dark forest the creatures shouldn't be terribly strong. No need to worry everyone. The students started then looked at Han Sha Oh oddly after Fanny spoke. They hurriedly relieved themselves of their packs and formed a circular defensive position. Chapter 33, A Small Magic Trial Chapter 33, 
A small magic trial suddenly five cat-like shapes rushed in from around them but the shapes had three heads a spiky tail and yellow light dancing within its eyes. Not to worry these are just barb tail cats. Everyone hurry and attack. Show me the results of your magic training. Fanny breathed a sigh of relief upon seeing the magical creatures. Numerous bone arrows swiftly materialized out of thin air as students finished their incantations after Fanny had finished speaking. The bone arrows shot towards the five barbed tail cats with whooshing sounds. Although their speed was fast three of them were hit by the bone arrows and blood immediately blossomed on their brown fur affecting their speed. However, the first two that had rushed up first actually evaded the students' bone arrow attacks and dashed straight for them. As the students panicked their bone arrow attacks veered off course or exploded in midair as they repeatedly made mistakes in their frenzy. The two barbed tail cats started left and right. Fanny made her move just as the one of the left was about to charge into the defensive perimeter. The same bone arrow magic in her hands resulted in three bone arrows that flew unerringly onto the three heads of this cat. Three shrill wails emitted from the barbed tail cat's mouth and it shrank from making another rush. It ran away fearfully instead. The other barbed tail cat made for Han Shao and in fact it had set its sights on him. In the other students panic their bone arrow magic continued to be riddled with mistakes and didn't slow down the cat at all. Jean was only concerned with Fanny's side and in the heat of the moment forgot about the threat on the right. He only reacted after Fanny had fought off the barbed tail cat but it was already a bit too late. The cat had directly charged to in front of Han Shao and its three fang cat heads along with razor sharp claws went directly for him. Brian be careful. Fanny and Lisa both screamed in fright. Han Shao's face stayed calm and didn't panic as he saw the barbed tail cat bearing down on him. A cold curve even played at the corners of his lips. Han Shao suddenly snaked out a hand like lightning when the barbed tail cat's claws were in front of his face. His left arm swung violently and the durable wooden sticks intended to be a tense structure that were tied to his arm caught the barbed tailed cat's sharp claws. His right hand immediately thrust it out and the others seemed to see a bright red line drawn through the air. Han Shao's right hand landed on the cat's lower abdomen paused for a second and was then retracted. Jean's bone arrow support also arrived at the same time and two arrows tardily shot towards the barbed tail cat. Three ghastly wails sounded out from the three heads as it fell listlessly to the ground with an audible thud where it then laid unmoving. The four already injured barbed tail cats were spooked by the fall of this cat and they cried wildly as they hurriedly retreated vanishing without a trace in the blink of an eye. A. Master Jean's bone arrows are so strong they killed this barbed tail cat in a flash. The bone arrows that we and Master Fanny shot towards our cats only injured them and weren't nearly as powerful. Amy gave a soft exclamation and looked at Jean in surprise. The others also thought it was odd after Amy's words and even Fanny gazed at Jean in astonishment. She said with a perplexed look bone arrow is just a basic attack magic. You were able to immediately kill a barbed tail cat with this magic. This is truly amazing. Jean's expression was a bit strange in the beginning as if he was also befuddled as well but after Fanny's words he immediately displayed a very confident smile and nodded faintly at every and as if he too was paying respects to the power of his attack magic. Brian when you slashed at the cat with your right hand just now why did I seem to see a red line slash through the air? What's going on? Although Master Jean killed the barbed tail cat it seemed to have been you who made it off balance right? Lisa had been paying attention to Han Shao and thought briefly thinking it was a bit odd. Hey hey don't think nonsense. Lisa, Brian merely hit the cat once but his hit didn't have much effect. What harm could he bring to the barbed tail cat with his errand slave strength? Bach flicked a disdainful glance at Han Shao and said in a voice heavy with sarcasm. Han Shao smiled dumbly and didn't say much but the other students having seen the same sight also looked at Han Shao with some confusion. They all soon decided that Han Shao hadn't had any effect and it was Jean who had killed the cat. After all to them Han Shao was just an Aaron slave that they could bully at their leisure. How could an Aaron slave have such strength and ways? All right, all right, let's get out of here. The barbed tailed cat is a magical creature that picks on the weak and fears the strong, but this type of creature is a pack animal and would cause some trouble for us if they came back with reinforcements. These low level magical creatures have no magical cores and their skin isn't worth much. Ignore them and let's leave. Fanny didn't pay much attention to Jean after that initial moment of astonishment as she urged everyone to pick up their dropped belongings 
and hurry on their way. This caused great disappointment for Jean as he thought that Fanny would definitely see him in a different light. The group of twelve repacked their belongings under Fanny's cries and continued southbound. Han Shao trailed the pack and wore a bizarre smile before he left. He'd peeked at the two wounds caused by Jean's arrows and could smell a burnt smell already emitting from them. Its flesh could be glimpsed from the wounds and he could see that it was already a charred burnt mess. This barbed tail cat's death was due to the red spell fire of Han Shao's mystical glacial spell fire and had nothing to do with Jean. He looked at his right hand and circulated his magical yu on. A bright red spell flame abruptly erupted from his middle finger. Han Shao breathed a sigh of appreciation for the power of the mystical glacial spell fire as he admired the flame finally chuckling to himself before catching up to the others. Night. Bright moonlight filtered through the dense tree branches and leaves to scatter on all corners of the dark forest. A few unknown bugs serenaded the night bringing some joyful sounds to the otherwise peaceful forest. A bonfire burned bright red warming the chilly night air. Han Shao picked up a few branches with fresh meat draped over them and continuously turned them over the blazing flame. Delicious meat scents began to waft out into student noses after he applied some spices onto the pieces of meat. It smells so good. Brian how do you know how to do this? Lisa exclaimed in surprise as she wrinkled her cute nose as her gaze locked onto a piece of meat gleaming with oil. Your performance when you met the barbed tail cat today was terribly disappointing. You panicked so much that you couldn't even cast the most basic bone arrow magic. This won't do. And Master Jean although your last bone arrow magic was quite amazing you were too lax earlier. If it wasn't for Brian's high alertness he surely would have been harmed by the cat. The students were gathered around the bonfire as they listened to Fanny's loud lecture. Her brow was furrowed and she seemed to be very displeased with the students and Jean's performance earlier in the day. The students had timid expressions on their faces and seemed to be listening very intently. However, their eyes kept traveling to Han Shao's meat track and many swallowed audibly. Han Shao had been a full-time otaku in his previous life and had taken care of his daily needs. He'd naturally honed his cooking skills. The development of this world's cuisines were a far cry from the time in which Han Shao had resided in. People had started salivating when he'd merely deployed the slightest bit of his skills. Han Shao snuck a few glances at Fanny as her lecture sounded and was ears a bit startled by Fanny. Fanny's commanding aura. It looked like Fanny was the true organizer of this time's outing. Jean's position who was also a teacher in the necromancy major seemed to be a bit lower than Fanny. No wonder he was a bit afraid of Fanny. It wasn't as simple as him having a crush on her. Alright let's stop here. We'll run into more danger along the way. I hope you won't be as careless next time. Let's eat. After hectoring the students for a while Fanny was also extremely tempted by the delicious scent of meat. She'd been on the road all day today and had partook only simple bread and clear water. Her stomach was the first to speak up now that such delicious food was in sight. Master Fanny this is yours. Lisa this is yours. Bella Bok Jean these are yours. Han Shao had a strange smile on his face as he passed out the meat. Um, Brian nicely done. This meat is delicious. Fanny licked her lips after eating a piece and kept forth a steady stream of compliments. Han Shao's heart lurched at the sight of this arousing scene. Not bad. It's actually really good. Brian does have some skill. Lisa was also smiling happily and she devoured half her meat in the blink of an eye. What kind of meat is this? This is disgusting. It's not fully cooked yet. Ew. This is gross. There's no flavor to this. Damned Brian you did this on purpose. This meat is still raw. Bok Jean and Bella as well as some others with grudges against Han Shao cursed repeatedly after taking a few bites. Han Shao smiled honestly with an innocent face A. Eh? Maybe a few pieces really weren't ready yet. Sorry, bad luck. Chapter 34, Subconscious Changes Chapter 34 Subconscious changes Han Shao and the band of twelve walked south for a full eight days. They met increasingly fiercer magical creatures along the way. Unicorn charging bulls enormous lizards magical wolves that could release wind blades and flying eagles that could spew out frost. They were handled easily at first and increased in difficulty until the band barely handled them by the skin of their teeth. Everyone felt the increasing pressure. Everyone started off eating the food that they had brought and started cooking the meat from the magical creatures when all their rations had been eaten. The magical creatures were increasingly violent but not all of the flesh was edible. The lizard, for instance, 
had a strange smell that accompanied its flesh that made it hard to swallow. But the stronger the magical creature was the more valuable their carcasses particularly the ones that could cast simple magics. These creatures would have magical cores within their bodies. These cores were very precious and could be sold for varying high prices according to their level. The Ben's Hall was uncommon as well. They had obtained four cores from magical creatures over the past couple of days three from the Windblade Wolf and one from the Frost Eagle. The cores from magical creatures were divided into six levels. Level 6 cores were the cheapest while level 1 was the most expensive and basically hard to even catch a glimpse of. These magical cores could be used to create powerful magical weapons and increase a mage's power. Some special ones could even be used to increase a mage's mental strength thus. Their prices were incredibly high. The Windblade Wolf's magical core was ranked at level 5 and could fetch 20 gold at the market while the Frost Eagle was higher at level 4 and its market price was 150 gold. Based purely on their haul of magical creature cores the Bent had already turned a profit even after subtracting out the 50 golds needed for borrowing the battle steeds. Not to mention that apart from their cores the bodies of these magical creatures were also worth some money. The fur of the Windblade Wolf and the Unicorn corn horn of the charging bull were all valuable items. The value of these items added together had greatly exceeded Fanny and Jean's original expectations. Everyone has improved after a few days of training and you no longer panic when faced with magical creatures. This is the most important thing in actual battle. On top of that our luck has been quite good. We have gained much from this time's outing. We will allocate the profits out to everyone after we return to the academy and sell these items. Fanny was in a good mood mood and she wore a satisfied smile on her face when she spoke softly to the students. Han Shao had been coldly observing everything along the way. The unskilled students had gone from panicking when faced with magical creatures to handling them with indifference. Han Shao had seen it all clearly. Han Shao's five senses were much sharper than anyone else's due to training his magical Yu on. His early warnings had accomplished much in the later days but no one could understand why Han Shao had such perceptive senses. Fanny had even thoroughly checked Han Shao's body over the past few days but had turned up empty-handed each time. Fanny was perplexed but could think of no better way. She could only say that she would employ the school's magical facilities to give Han Shao a thorough once-over after they'd returned to the academy. After several days of early warnings and cooking mouth-watering meat Han Shao's status had subconsciously risen a few grades in this time's outing. Other than Bach Bella and others who continued to be extremely unfriendly toward Han Shao because of their continued bad luck in always getting a piece of disgusting food the other students no longer ordered Han Shao around. Some of the students who were more particular about their food had even tried becoming more friendly with Han Shao in hopes of obtaining better food. Master Fanny when can we reach that cemetery of death? Lisa immediately asked after hearing Fanny's words. Fanny's brow creased upon hearing this question and she became silent. She sighed gently after a while. I've only heard that the cemetery of death was once discovered in the deep south of the dark forest but I'm not too certain of its exact location. Location. Our main purpose in traveling to the Dark Forest this time was to teach you the correct method of deploying necromancy magic when faced with danger. Based on our current results you have all reached this standard. I don't know the exact whereabouts of the Cemetery of Death. You might have noticed by now that the magical creatures we are facing are becoming stronger and stronger. If it weren't for the pre-warnings that Brian had been issuing the past couple of days I think some people would have already gotten injured but even so. We only made it through by the skin of our teeth when we met that frost eagle yesterday. I'm worried that some amongst us will not only be hurt but some may even die if we continue further. Therefore I think it's time that we head back. The students were a bit dumbfounded by Fanny's words while Jean nodded and spoke indeed. We're just out here for training. The location of the Cemetery of Death is uncertain and we don't even know if it truly exists. It's normal for us not to find it. Everyone had personally experienced the situation yesterday. If we continue south I feel that everyone's lives will be in danger. This time's outing has already reaped rich rewards so there is no need for taking further risks. The two teachers had thus, 
spoken. A few of the more cowardly students thought back to the events of the past two days and all nodded their heads in agreement. All right then let's go back to the academy. The dangers are becoming worse. Bak you coward. How else can rewards be gained if not through risk? If it weren't for yesterday's danger how could we have gotten that Frost Eagles core? We should continue further south perhaps we'd obtain even more valuable items. This way the other majors won't look down on our necromancy major when we go back to the academy. Lisa glared at Bach with a contemptuous look and tilted her head back with sarcasm. She then cast a glance at Han Sha Oh who was cooking meat on the side with an indifferent expression. Brian wouldn't you agree? Ordinarily no one paid any attention to Han Sha Oh but after his performance over the past couple of days incredibly enough the students all stared at Han Sha Oh after Lisa had spoken. Even Fanny and Jean were the same as if Han Sha Oh's decision was quite important. Han Sha Oh was involuntarily speechless. He paused and then smiled honestly. Taking a risks is a given. People haven't been hurt yet. Why don't we continue? Who knows maybe we'll gain even more rewards. Fanny gazed at Han Sha Oh strangely grew quiet for a moment and then surprisingly nodded her head. Alright since this is the case then let's continue until someone is hurt. Once that happens we'll return on our original path. Come come everyone it's time to eat. Han Sha Oh laughed lightly and called out. Fanny and Lisa then hurtled forward merrily dropping their manners as they accepted the two largest pieces of meat that Han Sha Oh handed over. In the deep of the night the cool moonlight spilled over the dark forest. A few students were already fast asleep in a few crude tents while some others struggled against their sleepiness and took up the grave task of standing guard. Han Sha Oh slipped away soundlessly by himself slowly moving away from the students' tents and creeped through the shadows of the towering trees. Han Sha Oh's not terribly strong body could be seen through the cracks between the shadows of the, the trees. He was as fast and agile as a cheetah abruptly changing direction with ease as he wove through the trees. He had traveled far away from Fanny and Co's tents in the blink of an eye and continued south. After a while Han Sha Oh's body suddenly stopped as he spread his two palms upwards and chanted the words to summon a skeletal warrior. Souls of the fallen soldiers heed the dark heralds call and reveal your existence. A skinny inky black little skeleton wielding a bone dagger abruptly materialized as soon as the incantation was complete. The little skeleton's body was even more dense and darker than before completely becoming one with the color of the night. It was like an elf of the darkness. The little skeleton continuously sprang off its feet to follow Han Sha Oh's high-speed dash but its bones no longer creaked with sound. The seven bone spurs flapped on its back allowing the little skeleton to speed through the air like it was hang gliding as it wove through the forest side by side with Han Sha Oh. Two wind blade wolves suddenly appeared in front of the man and skeleton duo. The two wind blade wolves were devouring the carcass of a magical creature in the shape of a wild pig. One of them seemed to fill the disturbance in the air as its sharp ears suddenly stood up and its green eyes darted to and fro. A bone dagger shimmering with a cold sharp light materialized out of the night. The bone dagger carved a marvelous curve through the thin air and suddenly stabbed towards the wolf that had been on high alert. At the same time a nimble figure suddenly rushed out from the trees of the dark forest and made for the other wind blade wolf. A faint purple light suddenly flashed in the darkened sky appearing all the more beautiful and fey. Two ghastly wails sounded out from the two wind blade wolves. The blood thirsty wolves had all been killed before they had a chance to react. One wolf's skull was cleaved straight through with the bone dagger and the other fell stiffly to the ground with frosty breaths coming out of its mouth. Hey hey another two level five course. Han Sha Oh talked to himself in satisfaction as he withdrew his hand. On the other side the little skeleton had already started dressing the valuable wind blade wolf skin with its bone dagger. Judging from its practiced movement this wasn't the first time that it had done so. Chapter 35 Prepare to fight Chapter 35 Prepare to fight Han Sha Oh worked by himself during the nights leveraging his perceptive senses to hunt down the magical creatures nearby. The flawless cooperation between men and skeleton had no drawbacks. They had gathered four level 5 cores by now as well as some valuable skin and horns. Han Sha Oh not only tried to cast magic whenever they hunted down magical creatures but also repeatedly practiced the bow narrow magic often combining missile and melee attacks for uncanny effectiveness. Han Sha -oh 
Oh never displayed the same panic and disarray that the students had displayed when they first met magical creatures. He always displayed the same calm even a sort of numb callousness. Even Han Sha Oh himself didn't know why he didn't have any negative emotions throughout the entire process. He could vaguely feel that his inner heart was actually brimming with eagerness and anticipation when he hunted magical creatures as if he really enjoyed the process. I'm definitely not a good person. Han Sha Oh laughed at himself and accepted this time's haul of cores and when blade wolf pelts from the little skeleton's hands, he patted the darkly gleaming head of the little skeleton and smiled let's go. We can go back now. The little skeleton's hand clutched its bone dagger with no traces of emotion in its empty eye sockets. It trailed behind Han Sha Oh and swiftly returned along their original path. Han Sha Oh chanted an incantation when they were halfway there and the little skeleton returned to the other dimension. Seeing that he was about to return to the camping area Han Sha Oh slowed his footsteps and walked unhurriedly through the shadows of the trees. As it was past midnight the students standing guard in the camping area had changed to Fanny Lisa and Amy. Lisa and Amy had half drooped eyes and looked incredibly sleepy. Anyone could tell at a glance that they were slacking off and not shouldering the responsibility they were assigned. It was a good thing that Fanny understood the importance of keeping guard. Her pair of beautiful eyes roamed the four corners alertly and her wary gaze immediately locked onto the direction that Han Sha Oh was coming from when his light footsteps grew near. Her magic staff in hand Fanny frowned with an expression of high alert on her alluring features. She slowly advanced in Han Sha Oh's direction and said softly who goes there? Master Fanny it's me. Han Sha Oh called out lightly as he walked out slowly from the shadow. Shadows. I knew it would be you. I went to look for you earlier and discovered that your tent was empty. Where did you go in the middle of the night? Fanny's eyes locked onto Han Sha Oh's body as she asked with confusion. Nothing much I only went to find a secluded corner to practice magic. After I asked you about the bone arrow magic last time I've been taking advantage of the night to find a secluded area to practice. I think that only with repeated practice can I guarantee that I won't make a mistake. Han Sha Oh scratched scratched his head and answered honestly in a light voice. Brian it's great that you're so hard working. After a while when you've grasped more magic I will explain this matter to the school authorities. That way your status as an errand slave can be waived and perhaps you will be able to enjoy the same treatment as the students. Fanny looked at Han Sha Oh and thought for a bit. Oh I was sold to the Babylon Academy of Magic and Force. Will my status as an errand slave be waived purely because I understand magic? Han Sha Oh asked after he recovered from being dumbfounded. Fanny nodded and spoke decisively. No mage has ever been an errand boy or slave. Being a mage is an esteemed profession throughout the profound continent. Even if our necromancy major is unpopular if you can prove that you truly understand magic then your status will change and you'll never have to be the slave that runs errands. I see that's wonderful. I actually have a lot more questions that I hope Master Fanny will be able to answer for me. I will do my best to improve myself and become become an adequate mage. Han Sha Oh's thoughts raced as he suddenly recalled the many unanswered questions he had from the magic books he had read previously and wanted to make the best use of this opportunity to get them answered. No problem you can ask me any necromancy questions you have in the future. I will help you. A. Although you're a bit lascivious right now I'm certain that you're a magical genius and will help you escape your current position. Fanny smiled faintly and responded in her gentle voice. Han Sha Oh smiled honestly as if he hadn't heard Fanny accuse him of being too carnal. He contemplated briefly and started asking Fanny a few questions regarding magical knowledge. After a brief moment Fanny gave a great start of surprise and gazed at Han Sha Oh in shock. Oh goodness Brian you already have so much magical knowledge. That's amazing. I gained this magical knowledge from reading the magical books in the library last time I helped Jack clean the library. Ever since I discovered that I could cast the bone narrow magic I started to investigate the reason why. Han Sha Oh lied smoothly and in fact spoke with a slightly embarrassed expression. Brian I really wasn't wrong about you. You really are a magical genius. Fanny exclaimed in astonishment again upon hearing Han Sha Oh's explanation. At this moment the sound of footsteps fell into Han Sha Oh's ears again. His face grew grave as he hastily spoke a sound is approaching but it doesn't sound like a magical creature. Rather it sounds more like a human. Fanny's beautiful features changed slightly after Han Sha Oh's words and she pulled on his arms in panic. They ran straight for the tents there are many 
races within the dark forest but not all of them are friendly. Even some who are humans like us will sometimes kill for a high-level magical creature core. We should be ready. Fanny's slender fingers clutched Han Shao's wrist in her hurry. She had no particular thoughts about it but Han Shao's mind had already been filled with sinister intentions. His mind started falling head over heels when the feeling of the smooth fingers of her jade hand crossed his wrist and his mind suddenly recalled the tantalizing moment on the back of a battle steed a few days ago. Everyone up. Lisa and Amy get everyone up and ready for battle. Possible danger approaches. Fanny words jolted the dozing Lisa and Amy awake. The the two could detect the arrival of danger in Fanny's frantic tone and they started raising a ruckus to warn those in the tents. In the blink of an eye many students who had been sound asleep in the tents all rushed out with their clothes in disarray and still half asleep. They began urgent preparations for battle. Fanny unintentionally glanced at Han Shao at this moment and found that Han Shao was smiling happily at the hand that was clutching his wrist. An expression of enjoyment could be found on his face. Incensed Fanny let go only after she gave Han Shao a sharp pinch with her jade hand. She spoke angrily in a low voice Damn it Brian I find that you're as lecherous as Fitch. Han Shao cried out in pain and wore an awkward smile on his face. He thought internally I wonder what would Fanny think if she knew that I was the one who touched her butt last time? Several heavy footfalls gradually approached and fell into everyone's hearing in the mess of the students getting ready. Han Shao had started to calm down after Fanny's pinch and the previous lustful gleam in his eyes faded without a trace to be replaced by a deep coldness. It was as if he was a bystander coldly observing everything around him. Heavy footsteps accompanied by weird airy sounds continued to approach the crew. Jean frowned and asked perplexed such heavy footsteps shouldn't belong to humans but two-legged magical creatures are exceedingly rare. What could they be? Fanny furrowed her brow in deep thought as her beautiful eyes suddenly brightened with understanding. She suddenly called out everyone hurry and summon skeletal warriors to the front we seem to have run into the man-eating monsters in the dark forest. Everyone was gobsmacked when the words man-eating monsters crossed Fanny's lips. A few of the female students shuddered as fearful expressions blossomed on their faces. Jean was also startled and hurriedly commanded everyone to form a circular defense pattern. He too brought out a brown magic staff that looked like a tree branch. His face was full of careful wariness. Rounds of incantations flew out from the students' and teachers' mouths. Multiple skeletal warriors ghouls and zombie warriors appeared out of thin air as well as Fanny and Jean's hate warriors. Hate warriors were more advanced beings of existence amongst the dark creatures. These hate warriors were enormous in size wielded metal clubs and had incredible strength in all the fat on their bodies. Their bodies also possessed extremely durable defensive capabilities and were a common meat shield used by necromancers. Indeed, following their thudding footsteps eight gray-colored two five-meter-tall man-eating monsters wielding studded clubs and long spears soon appeared in everyone's vision. Man-eating monsters were pack creatures. Ten or so man-eating monsters counted as a tribe. The man-eating monsters' nature was lazy and they liked to steal things. They were born robbers. They understood how to use studded clubs and long spears add to that the toughness and durability of their bodies meant they had extreme power and damage in close combat. However, However, what frightened people most wasn't the strength of the man-eating monsters but their habits. Man-eating monsters were labeled thus, because they ate humans. If they met humans in the course of a robbery not only would they steal everything but they would carry off the human for food. Han Shao and Co. had formed a defensive field with the skeletal warriors ghouls zombie warriors and hate warriors forming an outer defensive perimeter. A few necromancers readied their offensive missile spells and watched the approaching man-eating monsters gravely. Prepare to fight, Fanny called out. Her staff had already been raised up, 